Adam Harrington from Learn Your Land. And in this particular video, which I'm really excited to be sharing with you, we are going to be discussing one of my favorite medicinal mushrooms, and that is Trimedes versicolor, or the turkey tail fungus. And this is a mushroom that I've gotten to know pretty intimately over the past couple of years, and it's one that currently forms a pretty significant portion of my medicinal strategy. And so we're gonna discern between the turkey tail fungus, we're gonna talk about its identification, and discern between it and two of its lookalikes, which is the false turkey tail and the violet tooth polypore. Now if you're new to mushroom hunting or you've been watching these videos and you're saying, Adam, I can never find these species that you're discussing. Well, I'll bet that after watching this video, so stick with it, watch it to the end, I'll bet if you go outside, you will find at least one of these species today, if not two or all three. They're that commonly found. And so I belong to the Western Pennsylvania Mushroom Club, and it's a fantastic organization. If you've got a mushroom club in your area, I highly encourage you to join it. But we have a club species life list. So it's a list of all the species that we've ever found on all of our walks and all of our forays. And next to each species on this list is a number. And that number is a percentage that represents the frequency with which we have found this mushroom in all of our walks and all of our forays. And the top three mushrooms that we encounter on our walks and on our forays include the turkey tail fungus, which is actually number two, and then two of its lookalikes, which is number one and number three. Anyway, if you are interested in learning more about turkey tail, how to identify it, maybe you've been confused for some time, hopefully this video will alleviate any concern that you may have had. So first up, we're gonna talk about turkey tail, and then we're gonna talk about the false turkey tail, the violet tooth polypore, and perhaps some medicinal benefits as well. Turkey tail, or Trimedes versicolor. This is one of our great decomposers in our forests. And it's very good at breaking down the lignin in wood. So this is known as a white rot fungus. There are many species that are white rot fungi, and they break down the lignin. They can also break down, to some degree, the cellulose and the hemicellulose. These are plant cell wall compounds. You gotta figure, whenever there's dead wood out here, there's a lot of nutrients locked up in that wood. And very few organisms can actually break down the lignin, but various species of fungi can do it. And they help to recycle those nutrients back into the soil. So thank the universe for turkey tail. This is very commonly found throughout North America, and you typically want to look on sticks, logs, stumps, fallen branches as well. And this is a very thin mushroom, but it's not too, too, too thin. It's thin to some degree, and it's leathery, and it looks like a turkey's tail. And so if you think of what a turkey's tail might look like, and then picture that on a branch or a stump, that's kind of what turkey tail looks like. So I've got a log right here of turkey tail, and you can see that it's got multicolored concentric zones. So it's got bands of color. Typically you're seeing reds, you're seeing browns, you're seeing grays. Sometimes you're seeing blues and sometimes you're seeing purples. You're not just seeing things out in the woods. I mean, you're actually seeing this on the mushroom. It could be a very beautiful and a very colorful mushroom. And every species that I find is different. No two turkey tail species look alike. And so it's a flexible mushroom. You can bend it back and forth when it's fresh. When it's dry, it's not so flexible. It's a bit stiff, but when it's fresh, you could bend it back and forth. Whenever you touch this mushroom, you will feel that it's slightly velvety or hairy, but it's not too, too hairy. There is a lookalike known as Trimedes hirsuta, and that's much hairier. You can almost see that with your naked eye. This you can't see too well, the hairiness, but you could feel it. It almost feels like leather. So that's what the cap looks like, and this mushroom typically grows in rosettes or shelf-like, bracket-like clusters. When you turn this mushroom upside down, you will see, when it's fresh, that it is white. And so that's a key identifying characteristic for turkey tail. First, notice that the cap has multicolored concentric zones, but on the underside, this is a key identifying characteristic. It's white, and it contains thousands of tiny microscopic pores. So this is in the polypore family. This is a polypore mushroom, and those pores are the ends of tubes from where the spores are dispersed. As this ages, though, you will see that the white will turn slightly yellowish to brownish, but when it's fresh throughout most of the growing season, you're going to see that it's white. Also, you will notice that these pores on the underside are very, very close together. It almost looks completely flat. So they're white and they're very, very close together. Unlike other polypores, you might see that they're wider in appearance or angular, or you might even see gills on the bottom of mushrooms that look like this. But there are no gills, it's completely flat, and it's made up of thousands of tiny microscopic pores that are very close together. And there's not really any stem to this fungus either. It's just attached to the wood. And you can typically find it in deciduous or mixed woodlands, typically on sticks, logs, stumps, maybe in the wounds of trees, but it's helping to break down a lot of the lignin and the cellulose and the hemicellulose in the wood. And the season, as I mentioned before, is typically June. That's when I start seeing it here, at least in Western Pennsylvania, new fruiting bodies, all the way till about January or February, but you will typically find it all year round. It'll just dry up 
from about February, March, and April before uh, the new season starts. Anyway, key identifying characteristics again, look for the multicolored concentric zones on the top. It's kind of leathery and velvety. It's flexible when fresh. And on the underside, you will see that it's white. It's completely flat, a lot of tiny microscopic pores. And if you have all these characteristics and the mushroom kind of looks like this, then you probably have turkey tail, Trimides versicolor. So the second fungus that we are going to be discussing is the aptly named false turkey tail, Sterium austraea. Now unlike the true turkey tail, which is a polypore, and on the underside it contains pores and the surface is white, this one is not a polypore mushroom, but it is a shelf-like bracket looking fungus. This one is actually a crust fungus or a corticioid fungus. And a corticioid are the crust or parchment fungi that are named because they kind of resemble bark and they grow on the bark. And they kind of look like paint stains on wood. If you look a little bit closer, you'll see that's not actually paint, it's actually a fungus. And there are over a thousand species of crust fungi worldwide. This one's pretty easy to identify because it actually puts out a cap-like surface that kind of looks like the true turkey tail. So this one grows typically right around true turkey tail. And honestly, on this log right behind me, I did find some true turkey tail. But this one, Sterium Australia, is pretty much blanketing the rest of the log. And it kind of looks like turkey tail. It's got the same kind of appearance. It's kind of velvety on top. It's got the multicolored concentric zones. But typically, it's more reddish and brownish. And unlike turkey tail, which is typically flat, Sterium Australia, the false turkey tail, is almost funnel shaped. It kind of curls up. And you'll see it almost looks like a petal coming up out of the wood. And that's typically what it looks like when you see a lot of it on a log. And it's about two inches to three inches wide. And so is turkey tail as well. The turkey tail and false turkey tail, they can get a little bit bigger, but typically they're about two inches wide. Now on the underside is the key identifying characteristic to discern between the false turkey tail and the true turkey tail. Remember, the true turkey tail is white and it has pores, especially when it's fresh. As it gets older, it turns a little yellowish brownish. The false turkey tail, however, is not full of pores. It's completely flat because remember, it's a crust fungus. It's a corticioid fungus. And it's not completely white. So it's more tannish, reddish, brownish. So the true turkey tail is whitish and it contains pores on the underside. And the false turkey tail, even though it looks like it on top, on the underside, you will see that it's tannish, reddish, brownish. Its habitat is pretty much the same. You'll find it in deciduous and mixed woodlands. You'll find them on sticks, logs, and stumps. And it is a white rot fungus as well. So it's helping to break down lignin, the cellulose, the hemicellulose, and this log right here. And the season overlaps. You can find it pretty much June, all the way to December, January, February for fresh fruiting bodies. But you will find it overwintering and it will dry up. It'll get nice and brittle and crunchy, kind of like the true turkey. But remember, I'll say it again, that the true turkey tail has got the multicolored concentric zones on the top. It's leathery, but on the underside, that one is white and it's got pores because it's a polypore mushroom. The false turkey tail, however, does not have pores on the underside and it's a little darker in appearance on the bottom. It's reddish, brownish, tannish. So the third and final species we will be discussing today is the violet-toothed polypore, Trichaptum biform. And this is the most common fungus that we encounter on our walks and forays with the Western Pennsylvania Mushroom Club. So that means number two was turkey tail, number three was the false turkey tail. You can see it's saturating this log right here and that's what it typically does in the forest. What's interesting about this log is that these specimens are actually arranged perpendicular to the forest floor, which is not how you usually see polypore mushrooms, which means this tree probably just fell down, so it's gonna take some time for this fungus to reorient it itself because it wants to optimize spore dispersal and it is optimized when it's completely horizontal to the forest floor. Anyway, this kind of looks like the turkey tail, at least from the top. It's got multicolored concentric zones. However, the colors are more subdued. So you're seeing a lot of whites, you're seeing some grays and some browns, not much more color typically than that. The margin, however, sometimes is violet and it won't always be that conspicuous. You might have to look at it up close. You might not even see it at all. It's kind of leathery in appearance, and these are typically a little smaller than turkey tail mushrooms. These are about two inches or less, whereas turkey tail are typically two or three, sometimes even four inches across. Now the key identifying characteristic, like with the false turkey tail, is on its underside. This will help you discern between this mushroom and the turkey tail mushroom. So this is a polypore mushroom. It's not gonna be completely flat, but these pores on the underside essentially stretch themselves out, and they almost look like teeth on the bottom. And so it's not 
completely poured out like you would see in a turkey tail fungus and it's not completely flat like you would see in the false turkey tail but it's got teeth that kind of spread apart from one another and these teeth at least when this fungus is wet and young you will see that it is violet colored or purple colored as this mushroom matures it kind of lose some of that violet hue but you could still kind of make it out if you look at it closely and you can kind of see that there's a violet hue going on here but you're not always going to see it and like the turkey tail, this typically inhabits deciduous woodlands, and this species in particular, Trichaptum biform, likes hardwood logs, sticks, and stumps. It's a closely related species, Trichaptum abietinum. However, that one is usually found on conifer logs and sticks and stumps. But because this is a black birch, I'm fairly confident in identifying this as Trichaptum biform. Now this does have some medicinal qualities, not much. There was a paper published in the late 40s, 1940s, that isolated a compound known as biforminic acid, and that was shown to have antibacterial activity against Staphylococcus aureus. Most people don't use it for a medicinal mushroom, but it is an important decomposer of our deciduous wood and our lignin here in the forest in western Pennsylvania. Again, this is Trichaptum biform, the violet toothed polypore. It's gonna look like turkey tail on the top, but on the underside, you're gonna see that it's violet, it's not completely white, and there are little teeth that spread apart. Now, as I alluded to before, turkey tail is one of the premier medicinal mushrooms out there. This has been used for centuries in traditional Asian medicine, and it's one of the most well-researched fungi out there, not just for its beneficial effects on humans, but also on the land. So this is a great detoxifier of, for example, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, of PCBs, and also synthetic dyes. But when it works in our bodies, we see that a lot of research is being done on compounds known as beta-glucans, and these make up the cell walls of fungi. They're essentially polymers of glucose. They're also found in various species of bacteria, also some plants. And what they do is they work in our bodies pharmacologically as immune system regulators. So they can stimulate certain processes like phagocytosis, natural killer cell activity, macrophage activity, but they can also help to suppress, for example, pro-inflammatory cytokine release. And on a macro level, we see that turkey tail and its beta-glucans have anti-cancerous properties against lung cancer, against gastric cancer, and also colorectal cancer. Now there have been quite a few studies on turkey tail over the years, and perhaps one of the most impressive was a recent one, published in ISRN Oncology in 2012, funded in part by the National Institutes of Health. And what they found was that up to six grams of turkey tail led to faster immune recovery in women with breast cancer after they received radiotherapy. And back in 2002, the Journal of Clinical Pharmacology essentially summarized the research on turkey tail and human health. And what they concluded was this, and I quote them, the clinical efficacy of the turkey tail extracts after oral administration has been demonstrated in more than 30 clinical trials in which significant improvement in both survival rate and general health status was generally observed in cancer patients receiving chemotherapy and or radiotherapy. So as you can see, this is quite an impressive fungus, one of the most interesting species out there in my opinion. It's so common, but in my opinion, not a lot of people give it enough credit. So I encourage you to go out there and look for this mushroom and maybe do more research on it and see if it may become an ally in your life. If not today, then hopefully one day soon. I really don't think you have anything to lose by befriending this particular species, Trimetes versicolor. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something about turkey tail and its lookalikes, the false turkey tail and violet tooth polypore. If there's anything that I didn't address and there are always things that I don't address, I can't cover everything. I mean, I can only cover maybe 0.000001% of everything that anybody could ever cover about mushrooms. But if I forgot anything, please feel free to reach out and I'd love to help you as best I can. If you want to head on over to learnyourland.com, I'd appreciate it. You can sign up for the newsletter. We can stay in touch that way. Also, if you're on YouTube, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can stay up to date with all the videos that I plan on releasing. Thanks again. I hope this was fun watching for you. It was a lot of fun making this video, and I hope you learned something. I'll see you on the next video.